now we are starting chapter number 4 memorandum and articles of association part 1 first we will see the provisions of memorandum of association remember that memorandum of association is the main document of a company just like constitution is the main document of india so memorandum is the main document of a company but you have to write apart from this the definition of a memorandum that is given under section 256 it means memorandum of association of a company originally framed or altered from time to time as per the previous company law or this act that is companies act 2013 you have to remember two things you can note down uh, in the exams also it defines the scope of company's activities so what company can do and what company cannot do is fully described in the memorandum in both ways it is described affirmative and negative so what company can do and what company can not do now let's see the forms of memorandum section 4 6 uh, states that memorandum of a company can be of following format in the following format which are given in the tables of schedule one of the companies act 2013 table a format is applicable for a company having a share capital table b format is applicable for company which is guarantee company without share capital and table c will be applicable for guarantee company with a share capital and table d for unlimited company and table e for unlimited company with a share capital this is very easy to understand but it is difficult to remember so do one thing memorandum is table a to e and try to remember in this order s g g s u u s now let's see what are the contents of memorandum memorandum mein aakhir aisa kya likha rehta hai so there are mainly six clauses which memorandum contains first name clause name of the company situation clause registered office uska kis state mein wo likha rehta hai object main clause object clause ki company kya kya activities kar sakti hai this is written in the object clause liability clause rehti hai that is liability of members is limited or unlimited capital clause ki share capital ka structure kya hai and lastly there is a subscription clause signed by the subscriber you have to remember that in case of one person company there is an additional clause that is called nominee clause here the sole member gives the name of the nominee now first we will discuss about the name clause this is important also from exam point of view every company must have its own name section 42 says that the name should not be identical or it should not resemble to name of any existing company further it says that it should not use the words which are offense under the law or which are undesirable in the opinion of the central government for name for getting the name you have to apply to the roc the application the format of application is inc1 with fees you have to submit the registrar of companies once he is satisfied about the name will reserve this name for 60 days and you have to file the incorporation paper within this time whenever the question of name clause will come you have to quote the case laws and these three case laws you can quote first case laws is the buttercap margarine company penchard and then atlas teen case laws aapko quote karne hi padenge to get more marks in the exam than others apart from this there are additional points about the name clause is every name of a company should end with the word private limited or a limited except ye exception se yaad rakhne except section 8 company that is associate not for profit and unlimited companies one person company should use the word one person company below its name every company should display its name outside every its office in english and local language name should be engraved on the common seal and it should appear in all official publications of the now let's see the situation clause in situation clause you have to mention the state in which the registered office of the company is situated and you need not to give the exact address every company must have its registered office within 15 days of its incorporation not only this as per new companies act company should furnish the verification of its address within 30 days of its incorporation 
in object clause you just have to mention the objects of the company for which it is formed every person dealing with the company must know the type of business which the company is doing there are numerous decided case laws which says that object clause puts a limit beyond which it cannot travel it is also called a lakshman rekha any act of the company which is beyond its object clause will be ultra vires and will be void however it was decided that for a trading company there is a implied power to borrow the money even if it is not mentioned specifically in the object clause and lastly the case says that there is a unrestricted freedom is given to the company to choose its object the only exception the object should not be illegal now let's see the doctrine of ultra vires the most important question of this chapter any act beyond the powers that is beyond the objects of the company will be treated as void and will have no effect for example if a cotton company purchases a land for manufacturing the wine such contract will be void because the wine making is not the object of the company and such contract which has beyond the object clause does not bind the company no one can sue on it acts beyond object clause even cannot be ratified by the shareholders however please remember that acts beyond the agent's authority but are within the powers of the company can be ratified ye ek alag se bhi question aa sakta hai exam mein so we can understand this with the help of diagram also for example this is the unrestricted power of the company to raise the money this is company's power but the board of director the power is restricted only 2 crores of rupees can be raised by the board of director suppose the board of director has raised 5 crore rupees of loan this additional 3 crore will be void because it is beyond the power of the board however it is within the power of the company so company that is the shareholder can ratify this act of board of director and can give the legal effect to this borrowing of 5 crore it means the acts which are within the company's limit but beyond the board of directors can be ratified by the shareholder similarly any act which has ultra vires to articles but within memorandum of association can be ratified by the shareholder by altering the articles of association doctrine of ultra vires is so important jitna bhi likhenge aap kam hai still you have to mention three case laws ye to important hai ye aapko likhna hi hai first ashbury railway carriage and iron company limited versus riches most important case laws ye aapko quote karna hai apart from lakshman swami mudliyar versus lic and national provincial bank limited ye tino case aapko quote karna hai in doctrine of ultra vires Now, effect of ultra vires acts. So, कोई भी अगर act ultra vires है तो उसका effect क्या है? It will be void ab initio. Ab initio का मतलब है from the very beginning ये void रहेगा. The court can put an injunction on such ultra vires acts. The directors will remain personally liable for all such ultra vires acts. If the ultra vires borrowing is there, it does not create the debtors and creditor relation between the company and the party. and out of such ultra vires money if the company has purchased any property the company's right on the property will remain protected now liability clause and the important thing liability me just aapko mention karna whether the members liability is limited or unlimited if it is limited by shares what is the amount up to which it is uh, limited or guarantee ke case mein up to the amount guaranteed it is limited after that there is a capital clause in this capital clause you have to describe the share capital of the company for example capital of the company is divided is rupees 10 lakh divided into 1 lakh every shares of 10 each section 60 says that if authorized capital is mentioned in any official publication then up, along with this the paid up capital should also be mentioned in that document or publication then comes subscription clause this is the last clause lastly declaration by the subscribers is given mentioned we desirous of being formed into one company etc 
it contains name address occupation signatures and number of shares to be taken this is important the signature must be attested by witness each subscriber must take at least one share and the rules 13 rule number 13 will be applicable in subscription clause you can quote a case law this is very important metal constituents limited the subscriber cannot repudiate his liability on the ground of misrepresentations one certificate of incorporation is issued Iske upar case aa sakta hai. so the subscriber cannot shy away from his liability to take the shares mentioned against his name even if he says that somebody has misguided him the rest of the topic we will discuss in the next part if you have any doubt you can call at this number and try to revise and try to give the test also